Hey guys, how's it going? Today we'll be looking at the Razer Edge Pro, which is one of my favorite tablets. And uh, there's real, something really special about this tablet because it's not like an iPad, it's not like a uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab, it's not like an Android or a iOS tablet. This thing runs full Windows and uh, the really unique thing about it is how powerful it is. It has a full core i7 dual core processor in it. It's not an Intel Atom, so it's not one of those weak Windows tablets and it's not an ARM processor. It's a full win uh, Core i7 processor in it. And uh, this is the, so far, the only tablet I know that has a dedicated graphics card. It has a GeForce GT 640M in it, uh, which is not uh, the highest end graphics card, but it can run some, de some games decently. It's definitely better than an Intel integrated graphics card that comes with those Intel Bay Trail processors anyway. So uh, yeah, we'll be uh, looking at this today and show you guys a few things what you can do with it. Um, so this tablet came out in 2013 and it was available for uh, $1,000 or I think around 1300 without the add-ons. And I'll show you guys the add-ons later. You pretty much have to have them. So essentially the, the price of this is up to like $1,800, which is a lot of money. We're going to look at this tablet. Uh, it's about two pounds, pretty heavy. It's also pretty thick, as you can see. It's definitely not an iPad, so it's not that thin, pretty thick. But what can you expect? It has a full core i7 processor inside of it. Uh, it's webcam and microphone on top. This is a Windows button right here. So as it runs Windows 8, I upgraded to 8.1. You can see here. Um, so down here we have dual stereo speakers, uh, the docking station port slash charging port. Up here we have a single USB port, uh, recessed headphone jack. Be careful of that. Um, volume rocker. And uh, this is a lock, rotation lock, a keyboard, brings in the on-screen keyboard, and the power button. And pretty big fans on the back, these, these things get pretty loud and pretty hot. So uh, yeah, this being a very, very small portable device, it can get pretty hot um, when playing games and stuff. Nice Razer logo on the back here. So yeah, what can this thing do? Well, basically, uh, Razer made this so that you can play games on the move. And I know that a lot of people like to use uh, controllers when playing games and stuff. And you'll be like, well, why not just buy a portable like gaming laptop and stuff? Well, this thing is still a lot more portable than a gaming laptop. A gaming laptop is like at least four or five or more pounds, starting with the Razer Blade, of course. Razer Blade is probably the lightest, and it goes all the way up to, you know, the Alienwares and the... Uh, the MSIs and stuff which are really really heavy. So I'll show you, you have to use this with some accessories if you want to get the most out of it. It does not come with a video out port so you have to get this uh, docking station if you want video out. It docks onto here. On the back you get three USB ports, HDMI, headphone and microphone jack and a connector for the charger here. So if you want video out, if you want more than one USB port you pretty much have to get this docking uh, docking station right here which is an extra $99 on top of that. So, yeah, that's kind of that kind of sucks. But Razer basically gave you a whole bunch of accessories. You pretty much had to to buy. Otherwise, it wasn't going to be that useful. I mean, I don't, I can't think of anyone using this tablet by itself without any of these accessories. So, if you want um to have a really nice uh, desktop experience, you can hook it up to this docking station. And uh, I will hook it up in a second right here. Show you guys what you can do with it. Alright guys, what has happened here is that I hooked up my mobile monitor to my uh, docking station on the Razer Edge and I have it outputting to this monitor right here. I haven't shown you guys this yet, but this is called the Mobile Monitor To Go, uh, made by this company, MMT, Mobile Monitor Technologies. It is a 15.6 inch portable uh, monitor slash display and uh, basically it takes in any HDMI input. So you can see it has a HDMI port. Uh, AC adapter and power on power uh, port right there as well as a micro or uh, mini USB port right there you can fit in your iPad here as well so this taking in any HDMI input means that you can use it with your iPad your iPhone and your tablet video game consoles cameras pretty much anything that has HDMI you can hook up to this monitor here it has a nice stand at the back and there's several different ways you can use this uh, you can actually put it down like this and uh, has a nice convertible uh, hinge to it as well so you guys can see it better okay 
So yeah, this can actually uh, convert like this. And if, you, if you're on the move and you want to show some business people your presentations and stuff, you just swivel it like this and can show people easily. And it converts all the way down and flips it into, you can flip it into uh, tablet mode, I guess is what I can call it. So yeah, this is the mobile monitor to go. It weighs about uh, two pounds, pretty slim. It also has USB ports here, so you can use it as a USB host and a 3.5 aux for your headphones. Comes with built-in speakers because this is a full HD model. They have three models. This is a full HD one, which has a 1080p display and dual speakers, stereo speakers in it. And uh, also, there's some hidden controls here for accessing the volume and the, the brightness here. Yep. So, I think it's pretty nice. I uh, have it hooked up to my Razer Edge, but I use it a lot to hook up to my PS4 and PS3 as well. Also comes with this nice uh, carrying case if you ever buy it. It's a nice carrying case here. And I have my mechanical keyboard hooked up to my Razer Edge as well, as well as my Asus Gladius gaming mouse here. It's a pretty good setup. Now you have a full desktop gaming interface, which you can use to play uh, a lot of games with. So it works just as it would a desktop now. Oh, there's the, the stereo speakers on you. can hear it's pretty loud. Get just the brightness on this keyboard. <laughs> Ooh, flashy. Okay, uh, tone it down a bit. Tone it down a bit. Okay. Let's see. So, yeah, if you're ever doing any uh, video gaming on this, it's pretty nice. Now, this has a 640M, so that means it can play most of these games in... Uh, I have Saints Row 4, you can install GTA 5 on this as well. The problem with this is that it only has a 128GB solid state drive. You can get it up to 256 gigs. Uh, that's the maximum and it's not expandable. So if you ever want to play big games, I recommend getting an external hard drive because yeah, it's not going to be enough. I don't know why gaming laptops still have like 256 gigs. It's really not enough to play any games with. Okay, my Steam library here. Um, can play some Unreal Tournament. Yeah. Oh, I have to install this. Hold on. All right. So playing Unreal Tournament Three Black Edition. You can hear the stereo speakers are pretty good on this for a portable monitor. Anyway, let's do some instant action, deathmatch. Um, on medium here, it can play almost anything on medium. If you turn it to high, it might get a little bit laggy. But medium should be fine. And this is on uh, 7, 1366 by 768 which is the Razer's native resolution. It's not full HD, unfortunately, but it is HD. So that is Unreal Tournament 3, and uh, let me show you guys something more. So right now I'm using it in desktop mode, and if you're ever gaming on the go, then this is where the Razer Edge 
comes in handy because you can actually undock it and use it on the mobile move by using this controller dock here. So Razer sells it with this $250 accessory, the controller dock. Uh, well, this is its main selling point actually because no other uh, PC, gaming laptop, or whatever, you can comfortably play on the airplane or on the train and stuff. And uh, if you ever want to play um, on a plane or something, then pretty much uh, this is what it's designed for. So let's put it in here. Alright guys, so now let's say that uh, you want to have gaming on the go, you want to go to your friend's house, you're going to take the subway, and uh, you still want to play your PC games, except now you can't do it with a keyboard and a mouse, obviously, if you're uh, mobile. So, Razer has kindly made this um, controller dock available for your Razer Edge. Once you pay up the extra money for it, you can slide it in like this and uh, push it in like this. And it has some force feedback in it as well. Okay, there. So this acts uh, as a V input device, so now um, it's basically acting like as if you connected a uh, Xbox 360 controller or uh, basically any controller gamepad to your tablet and you guys see it well like that okay now let's start up another game like Borderlands for example okay I want to play this game on the go um, and it has this dual analog sticks d-pad this is a select button this is a start button, you have your standard X, Y, A, B controls right here, another analog stick, um, two shoulder buttons and a trigger button, two shoulder buttons and a trigger button. So it has all the basic gamepad controls covered. Once I start Borderland, it just works, it just uh, detects my controller and I can play it without setting anything up, no problem. It is kind of heavy with the controller uh, dock. I think it's about four pounds or so with the controller dock, meaning that no one is ever going to hold this up while they're in the air. They're going to have to rest it on their lap or uh, rest it against something like like what I'm doing now. I'm resting against the table, but uh, most people are going to probably play this resting on their lap or something because it's just so heavy to hold it up in the air. Um, let's continue. Alright. Okay, so yeah, one thing that I notice when I'm playing with the controller dock is that it's not that ergonomic. Um, there's a reason why most gamepads have the controller, the analog stick, uh, diagonally from the controlling uh, buttons here and the D-pad. And the reason is because it's more ergonomic. It's just more natural for your thumb to move diagonally like this than it is to move vertically down like this. So because these control buttons are vertically down from my analog stick, from my joystick up here, it kind of wears down your thumb. Your thumb gets tired really fast, so I wish that Razer could have paid more attention to the ergonomics of this device, um, because most gamepads have diagonally from the, uh, from the analog stick and the control buttons, whereas this is just vertically down, and it's, it wears out your thumb after a while. So I have to, see I have to, I have to jump every time, and I have to curl my thumb down every time, it's really kind of tiring on my thumb after a while. Yeah. It's okay for the first few minutes and so, but once you play for extended periods of time, you can really hurt your thumb. Now. 
I'm gonna find some enemies to kill. Probably down here. Oh, here's some enemies. So it has some force feedback, which is nice. Something you can't get with a keyboard and a mouse is force feedback. Have this vibration. Here, fight for your life. This is I love you guys. Boom and trap. Or fragmented frag trap. Okay. Defensive subroutine. Okay, I'll choose all the guns. There we go. So yeah, this is Borderlands 2 running on the Razor Edge with the controller dock. And um, yeah, what can I say is that pretty much if you want to travel on the go and you want to do some PC gaming, this is pretty much your only choice. You're obviously not going to play with a 17-inch gaming laptop on your lap. So <laughs> yeah, and it's not like you'll be able to fit a keyboard and a mouse when you're on a plane or a train anyway. So uh, this is pretty much your only option. Um, it's not the best. Uh, I guess you can use a gamepad as well, but it's still not going to be as portable as this. So this is the reason why Razer made it, but it was too prohibitively expensive. You have to buy this controller dock, extra 250 bucks, and uh, it's just people looked at it and said, well, why can't I just get a better gaming PC or gaming laptop with a much better graphics card? and can do more heavy duty gaming for that price and the battery life is, on this isn't very good it's about three four hours i guess if you have the controller dock with the extended battery but then it's still not that great and it's kind of underpowered for for the time anyways the 640m is not really like a it's you need at least like 660 or 670 680 for the time this is uh, released back in 2013, so back when Ivy Bridge was the processor. And Ivy Bridge wasn't well known for the battery life. It wasn't until Haswell that Intel really improved the battery life on tablets and stuff. So I guess if Razer made it today, it would definitely be a lot more efficient if they made it with a Skylake processor, uh, Intel Skylake processor. And the battery life would certainly be improved. The heat would definitely not be as bad. As you can see, you can hear the fans here whirring. I'm not even doing any action in the game, but... You can hear the fans right now. Uh, so if you put like a Skylake processor, it would definitely increase the efficiency and increase the battery life. But I don't think Razer is going to make another one because the, honestly, I don't think they can sell too many of these. And they didn't sell too many of these back in the day. It's definitely not as uh, profitable as the Razer Blade for them. Ooh, I'm a mech. Melee mech clap trap. Okay. I'm just playing around with that. So yeah, Razer Edge uh, Pro is a pretty interesting tablet released way back uh, two, just two years ago, but probably already forgotten now. Not many people bought it. And uh, the closest comparison I would say to this is um, my wiki pad right here. So this is my wiki pad, and just like the Razer Edge Pro, it has this detachable controller dock right here. But the controls on the wiki pad are a lot more ergonomic. You see how the joystick is 
diagonal from the uh, controller buttons here, whereas on the Razer Edge Pro, they're directly vertically down. So the wiki pad is a lot more comfortable to play than the Razer Edge Pro. So it's a lot more ergonomic and this is a lot smaller as well. Some people have compared this to the Nvidia Shield as well, which I have also, which I also have. But they're kind of different devices. So the NVIDIA Shield, you need to have a gaming PC in the first place. You need to have a gaming laptop or a gaming PC to stream to the NVIDIA Shield using GameStream. Uh, otherwise, you can't, you can't play anything on the NVIDIA Shield. It's an Android tablet. So this one, you don't need anything to stream because it has a full core i7 processor and a GTX, uh, sorry, a GT, NVIDIA GT graphics card. But uh, the NVIDIA Shield by itself doesn't do much. You have to uh, game stream it. And even then, it's kind of a small screen, it's a 5 inch screen, whereas the Razer Edge is a full 10 inch screen, so this one gives you a better gameplay experience compared to the Nvidia Shield, but obviously this one's a lot more expensive and a lot heavier than the Nvidia Shield. The wiki pad, about 2 pounds, including the controller dock, and uh, pretty easy to play, but unfortunately the wiki pad does not support uh, Nvidia Game Stream unfortunately and uh, I used to play this with the on live service which streams uh, stuff from the cloud my PC gaming from the cloud but they got rid of the on live service so hopefully they will make a new service that I will that will allow game uh, PC streaming on the go that's not tied to Nvidia but uh, for now you know my wiki pad is nice but I don't have any way to play PC games on it but yeah you have this uh, optional controller accessory attaches to here just like on the Razer Edge this optional controller accessory attaches to it. I just want to unlatch it to get it out, like so. And it comes out like this. This by itself is as heavy as the wiki pad with the controller dock. <laughs> so yeah, but this is a lot more powerful, obviously. This has eight gigs of RAM. You can configure it with up to eight gigs of RAM, um, Core i7 processor, 256 gig of solid state drive. Uh, the graphics card is a 2 gigabyte uh, G GeForce GT 640M LE. So that is the full specs on this. Uh, I think Razer released the cheapest version with only 64 gigs, only 4 gigs of memory, and a Core i5. But no one's going to play it with those specs, right? I mean, it's going to be probably the same weight and stuff. So not much changes. You might as well get the more, the most powerful one. But even then, um, you have to carry this bulky controller dock with it. I mean, just if you want to compare how bulky this controller dock is. So my, I said my Wikipad controller is pretty big, right? It's pretty big already. And then how are you going to fit this, this in your backpack? Like this massive controller dock, how are you going to fit that in your backpack? You have to have a gaming 17 inch gaming notebook backpack to fit that in. And then at that point, you know, you might as well just bring your gaming, your 17 inch gaming laptop. Uh, so this device is very niche. And uh, obviously it didn't sell a lot, but it is still a very interesting tablet to me because it is still the most powerful tablet that you can get. The Microsoft Surface Pro isn't going to compete with this. The um, HP Stream, the other Windows tablets aren't going to compete with this. So there's really still nothing that can compete with the Razer Edge and in terms of uh, raw power. So it's still the most powerful tablet. And then if you want, you know, you can hook dock it into this docking station here. Just put it in my docking station. And then, bam, you got a full uh, gaming desktop experience right here. There we go. Hook it up to your keyboard, your mouse, and then you have a full desktop gaming experience. There's not many tablets that I can say can do that. Um, yeah, again, I'm not going to compare this to them. the Microsoft Surface Pro. It just has this little, little wimpy uh, type cover that you can attach to it. It's not the same as attaching a full mechanical keyboard and then having the stock and stuff. So, yeah, that is the Razer Edge Pro compared to my small and light wiki pad here. This is just like, this is much, much thinner and lighter than the Razer Edge. You can compare it. Yep, there we go. 7 inches versus 10 inches. There we go. You can see the size of the controller dock accessory and the size of the tablet. <laughs> Obviously no comparison. One is uh, just for emulators and gaming. This one is for full PC gaming. And uh, what I can say about it is that Razer made a really good effort to make uh, mobile gaming uh, viable. It, they made a really good effort because there's nothing like it. Uh, you still can't uh, play PC games on the move if you're on a plane or something. You can't just take out a gaming laptop and play something there. 
Uh, so if you want to do that, then this is still pretty much one of the only one of the only ways you can do that. So yeah, applaud to Razor Edge for doing that, but they could have uh, done better, I think. And uh, it's unfortunate they're not going to make any more of these, but I think they could have improved on this a bit. And if another company wants to take a stab with a Skylake processor and a uh, more ergonomic uh, controller dock, then I would encourage them to do so, because we still don't have anything like this around the market right now. So anyways, that is the Razor Edge Pro, and uh, I hope that I explained enough in my views so that you guys can uh, get some information about this uh, interesting device. But if you have any more questions, then please let me know. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube if you like my videos, and like, my, like them if you like my videos. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.